Joker and the Badger. Hey everyone, it is the Angry Honey Badger here, and it is time for another build video. We're going to be playing as the freshly reworked Victor, who in fact did need a rework, so I'm very excited about this. So um, what we're going to do today in this video is we're going to go over everything you might want to know if you're looking to play some Victor now. We're going to go over his abilities, talk about those. We're going to go over his runes and masteries, definitely his build items, and some of the pros and cons and just things you might want to know and strategery if you're going to be playing some Victor. So starting off, we're going to go ahead and cover those abilities so we know what's going on as the game progresses. So starting off with his passive, that is his glorious evolution. Now what happens here is he can upgrade his hex core four, well, three times, four times, whatever, we'll go over that. So every time you upgrade your hex core, you get to upgrade one of your abilities. Upgrading your hex core costs 1,000 gold. Once you upgrade it three times, you automatically get the fourth point in your ultimate. So you don't have to worry about that. So, I mean, it's got four upgrades. You only have to upgrade it three times, though. So um, each time you do this, too, you get ability power per your level and amount. It goes four, five, six on that. You get ability power, which scales upward, which goes 20, 40, 60. And then you get mana. And it goes uh, 150, 300, 500, um, I believe is how it works. So that's how it works. So it goes prototype core. Um, hex core, MK1, MK2, and then perfect hex core. So that's how that works. We'll talk about the upgrades and what they do and what I would suggest. Because there's going to be lots of options with Victor because um, when you have champions that do things like this, you have options, and that's just how options work. So um, starting off then with his first ability, um, that's his Q ability. That is his Siphon Power. You're going to go ahead and hit a unit, locks onto them. It will deal magic damage to them, and it will grant you a shield for 2.5 seconds, absorbing damage. Now, your next basic attack is converted into magic damage, dealing damage based on your level plus 50% of your ability power as damage. Um, I, this game, tried to max this out first. I'm, I've been playing around with him, so I've been trying a couple different things. Um, it's good in lane if you're confident you can poke them with it. You want to really make sure you get that next auto attack off. It does an insane amount of damage. It's raw damage on a Q, on the Q alone, just hitting someone with it, is really underwhelming, um, to be completely honest. You really need to get that next auto attack off on them. So if you attack them right away and hit, you know, just auto at the same time, you're bound to land it, but if it's somebody who's a bit out of range, like a long range mage in mid, like a Zareth, you're definitely not gonna want that. So um, typically you're gonna wanna actually max your E out first, but I'm just telling you what I did this game because I was just playing around um, because that standard attack does a lot of damage. So, and uh, the shield is very nice, which is pretty much why I really wanted it. So, um, but yeah, that is your Siphon Power. We're gonna max that out second typically. Um, here we're gonna actually get a little bit of a gank coming in from Vi. Um, we've been fighting him back and forth a little bit. We're gonna hit him actually with the Death Ray and uh, she's gonna be able to clean up the kill. I come in too and hit him with a Q, but she already finishes off. That's fine, I'll take the assist. Um, that is an acceptable acceptable offer to me. But next, we're gonna go over what you're gonna put points into. Well, well not put points into. Uh, let's just go over your W next, we'll go down the line. Um, that is your gravity field. Now, what happens here is when you put your gravity field down, it is going to be there for four seconds. Now, um, percentage of slow is increased as you put more points into it. Enemies generate stacks while they are in it. They, get, they generate a stack every 0.5 seconds. Now, once they hit three stacks, they will be stunned for 1.5 seconds. So that's how this works. Um, and once you, oh, we didn't talk about the augment on the other one. Well, we'll talk about this augment first. Well, once you get the augment on your gravity field, um, it will then flip everybody and move them to the middle of the circle after they're stunned. So um, we'll talk about this as it goes on. I'm gonna just do a little flash, ignite, chaos, storm, kill off the um, Ezreal and go with that. Um, back back quick though to that siphon power. When you augment it, you gain 30% movement speed when you use it for 2.5 seconds. So the same duration as your um, as your shield. So that's how that works. And then to your E ability, which will be the first thing that you're going to probably want to max out in the game, that is your death ray. Victory uses that robotic arm, it shoots a laser, it does deal magic damage, it scales from ability power, a lot of it, and uh, yeah, that is what it does. Now when you augment this, an explosion falls to death ray after you cast it. Um, it will deal the same amount of damage actually, at least it scales the exact same of magic damage, but enemies that have already been hit by death ray will only take 40% of the damage. But if a fresh target walks on it, it's like they get hit by the death ray. So um, this is a pretty good and it does deal a lot of damage. You'll see me half-lifing people with it late game because it currently scales from 70% of your ability power, which is pretty good ratio considering itself, its base, dam base damage at level five is 
250. So um, it is pretty good. Um, its cooldown is a little lengthy. It's nine seconds at rank five, but we're going to talk about that too in the build as this goes on. And then finally, your Chaos Storm is your Chaos Storm. After a 0.25 second delay, Victor will bust out that Chaos Storm. It will deal a decent amount of uh, uh, magic damage. The Cloud will remain around for seven seconds, um, firing lightning bolts that will deal damage every one second. It scales from your ability power um, and does different damage as it has those second drops. This Chaos Storm, as you can see, I'm having it chase him. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get him really low and then it times out after it's seven seconds, but we're going to be able to just line up a little bit of a ray and hit him with it. We're going to get caught out here, but actually the rest of the team kind of finally comes and cleans us up, so that's going to be okay too. And then when you upgrade your Chaos Storm, which is what happens once you upgrade all of your other ones, you automatically get the upgrade, and what happens here is your Chaos Storm will move 20% faster. So pretty helpful for uh, kind of chasing around people. One thing to note about the Chaos Storm is you can reactivate the ability to move it around yourself, um, which is very good to know how to do well. So I recommend that. So those are your abilities as Victor. Now going on and jumping to the build, we have built the Athene's Unholy Grail. Victor really, really struggles um, with mana if you do spam your skills, which I'm gonna be honest, who doesn't like doing that? Um, it's just very helpful, especially in fights. So you really do want the mana regeneration from the Athene's, it's a good item on Victor. The other big reason you really want it is because of the cooldown reduction. Um, you heard me a second ago talking about how his death ray has a nine second cooldown at rank five. That's a long time in team fights. So um, with this and your uh, masteries, you're at 25% cooldown reduction, which is very helpful. And then if you kill enemy targets, like killing Ezreal, um, that's fun. But if you get a blue buff then on top of things, then you'll be at, you know, at max CDR pretty much. So that's, that's a good way to be at least to have that 25%, that's gonna help you get it up more often. Same thing with his uh, Siphon Power. It does go down to a four second cooldown, which is not bad, but you know, another 25% on that, and it's good. You can start spamming your Q in team fights, getting that shield up more often, and once you put an augment down on your Q, you're gonna be able to move around do a lot more. We did finally put our first augment down in the game. We put it on the death ray because of the extra damage it does. It also murders out minion waves. It's just the best augment you're gonna want um, for Victor, in my opinion. Um, obviously, you can augment whatever you want in whatever way you want. It just comes down to personal preference. Um, and then at the second augment I will pick up will be in my queue for that movement speed, um, with, which helps him stay alive in fights, um, whether it's kiting or just fighting or however you want to use it, if it's initiation purposes or just getting away. So it's very important. Um, to put two points into that, or a second point into that, your second point. And then uh, you'd lastly put one into your W. I don't get around to it this game. I would do it more late game, that thousand gold into that one. Obviously, it would get you another point into your Chaos Storm, but I like getting a little bit more raw items and damage. You can call me a hater, um, but that's how I do it. Um, Triss, like, DCs there for a second, or goes AFK, and so she dies, but I pick up a kill on Lee Sin. Get a couple targets really low in this fight, but we all hit that trap, unfortunately. And yeah, we'll just go from there. So we do have our Magic Pen Boots. This is the other one that you could coin flip and you could go cooldown reduction boots if you really wanna make sure you always have 40% CDR. Um, I'm not comfortable doing that. I do really like the penetration boots. So uh, that would be one of those, well, if you want these boots or those boots, you could try out those differences to maximize uh, um, your cooldown reduction. That would be one really good way to do it. Um, also, if you do max out your cooldown reduction, you are going to get your ultimate down to about a 60 second cooldown. It's a uh, base time is two minutes. Um, when you max out, it's 100 seconds. But if you get 40% CDR, every 60 seconds will be pretty good for a Chaos Storm. Um, kind of meaning it'll be up for every fight. So that would be good for that. So um, that's another recommendation you could do. Now, we finished off the boots and the Athenes, and our first augment definitely did that. Now, at this point in the game, I'm going to start itemizing towards resisting their team. They do have a Riven. They do have a kind of a hybrid Ezreal actually in mid. Um, and then they do have a Jinx who actually already has an infinity edge and uh, a handful of kills. So we're gonna itemize towards Azonia's Hourglass. We're gonna just get the backside of Jinx with the tip of that death ray to pick up a kill. Now the death ray is a very good long range poke. It secures lots of kills as well. There we just drop the chaos from murder off uh, Sona. I guess I could tell my ray to go under their tower, but whatever, timed out. But um, your death ray by far is an ability that if you're looking to play Victor, you need to utilize it and practice how to use it. 
Um, you won't land every one, definitely not, but if you can't land any of them, it's going to be a very tough game. Um, it's something you need to learn. It's not the easiest of uh, skill shots just because of the way it works and how you can manipulate it and like using it directionally across the map, whether to cut off targets from moving a certain direction, really, um, and hoping they run into the damage, or just you know just using it in team fights, sneaking up on people, shooting it backwards across, you know, using it diagonally. There we get a kill with it, and we also do line it up to hit Sona at the same time. So you, it does take time to line and, and learn like what's the most strategic way to cast it in a good form. I mean, there we kill her too, but you can see that range on it. You can poke people from an insane. Um, distance with it, and it does deal a lot of damage, like I said. Um, you're going to want to max that out first and get that first augment on it, and you're going to start really trashing people. I think a lot of people think um, Victor currently is very overpowered because of this, but I wouldn't really say he's overpowered. Like I said, his Q, if you don't get the auto attack off, really, really underwhelming in my opinion. Um, the shield's helpful, but not, not that insane. He is a mage. He's very squishy, you know, another con to being a mage. He is very mana hungry if you don't build the chalice, so if he falls behind, he's going to have a bad time. You know, um, like I said, hard to master that death ray. These are all little cons. And uh, really getting your, your Chaos Storm down right and controlling it, uh, it's not super hard, but it's another thing along with this death ray you really need to um, just take note of and kind of learn. So if you're going to practice Victor, just really make sure the death rays are, um, are on point. It's just something that really I, I, can't, I can't say enough of. So... Um, it's very important. Gonna get into a fight here, pick up a kill on the Sona with the uh, Chaos Storm, which I should have moved, but apparently I didn't. Um, Riven gets killed, we pick up an assist there. We're gonna chase actually after these two. Um, I do a lot of damage. Here comes a Ray, that's pretty much half life sir. There's the Q with the auto attack, Igniter one standard attack, and she will just take out barely. I do take Ignite when I do play Victor. I like the uh, kill pressure it does give me, um, especially if I get them stuck inside of the gravity field, you're pretty much guaranteed to get it on him. So um, that's what I like to take. Now, as the game going on, we did uh, finish off that Zonia's Hourglass. Next, we would be building our Death Cap. We put another Augment Point, obviously, into that queue. So we have two points done. We'd go get our next one soon, um, probably right after that Death Cap. And uh, we'd be pretty much good to go. And then we'd finish out, honestly, with a Void Staff. So that would pretty much be your full build. The only situational items I will actually suggest if you want to skip something, um, if you really don't need like an Hourglass for some reason, you need Magic Resist, you can do um, the Abyssal. I don't really suggest it, though. And then the other one that I haven't messed around with as much, but I I'm, I'm think it would actually be pretty surprising, depending on your team comp and what you're looking for, um, a Lich Bane could actually be pretty crazy with the Q and then the follow-up standard attack. So just something to try out. Um, as for those runes, though, we're going to go with Magic Pen Marks. We'll go with Health uh, Seals, AP per level Glyphs, and AP Quints. And uh, we're going to go ahead and pick up a kill on Sona. Vi is going to get taken out. Um, the Riven is behind us doing some work, shutting down Lux. We're actually just going to kite her around here with the Death Ray. We're going to hit her with that. We're going to speed up. We get the shield. Um, Trist actually becomes bait. We're going to hit her with another couple abilities, dodge out on that stun, and just hit her one more time and pick up a kill as they surrender the game. But everything you need to know is in the description. Try him out. Just master that Death Ray and master that Chaos Storm, and you're going to do work with Victor. But other than that, I'll just see all of you guys in the next build video. Here we're just hanging on the side. They can't see us yet. She's going to see me. I'm just going to jump her. Um, now, this is what looks like a little bit greedy of a dive, but great setup there by Oriana with the orb. The double kill coming in quick for Yasuo. Uh, 